Hello friends, I'm Dr. Abhinaya and in this video we'll be looking at top molecular biology techniques that you must know to earn more as a researcher. So let's start with the first technique. The first one is PCR and RT-PCR. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction while RT-PCR it stands, stands for reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction. So what exactly will we be doing in PCR? So PCR is based on the ability of DNA polymerase. The ability of the DNA polymerase to synthesize any new strand of the DNA that will be complementary to the original DNA strand. So for, uh, for uh, polymerase chain reaction to take place, we will need DNA polymerase, we'll need magnesium, various nucleotides we'll need, primers, DNA template or the original strand of the DNA that we want to be replicated, that we will need. And we also need a thermocycler or a PCR machine. So when it comes to the PCR, the whole mechanism operate in this way. The first step would be the double-stranded DNA that is heat denatured. Then the primers are aligned to the single-stranded DNA. When uh, these primers are used they are extended by the DNA polymerase, DNA polymerase so that at the end we will have two copies of the original DNA strand. So there are basically three steps when it comes to the PCR. The first one is the denaturation. The second one is, first one is denaturation. Second one is annealing and the third one is elongation. And for these steps to, these three steps to take place, generally there are uh, various cycles and temperatures which is modified according to the template that we are using. That is the DNA strand that we are using and also according to the primers that we are using. So basically for one cycle of amplification, the first step will be denaturation, second one will be annealing and the third one will be the elongation. So this each uh, cycle, it will be repeated 20 to 40 times and then the result will be analyzed. So PCR, it has uh, it has its application in various fields, be it in genetics for the testing purpose or in pathology, we can use it to test various pathogenic DNA. RT-PCR is the next one. So RT-PCR, it stands for reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction or like we call it in short as RT-PCR. So in RT-PCR, the major difference between PCR and uh, the normal PCR and the RT-PCR is that in PCR, we use DNA as the template, while in RT-PCR, we use RNA as the template. RNA is very unstable to handle. So RT-PCR is used for that. RT-PCR, uh, off late, we have been hearing the term RT-PCR uh, PCR a lot after the pandemic. So whenever after the pandemic, there was a time when uh, wherever we used to travel, it was mandatory for us to take one RT-PCR test. So basically that RT-PCR test was used to detect whether the virus that is the COVID virus is present in us or not. So the second technique that we should learn is flow cytometry. So what we do in flow cytometry is that it is used to detect and measure the physical and chemical characteristics of a population of cell or a population of uh, various particles. There are four steps when it comes to flow cytometry. The first one is sample preparation. The second one is blocking. The third one is antibody incubation. The fourth one is data acquisition. So this flow cytometry, it is used more in immunology, virology, molecular biology, cancer biology and various infectious disease monitoring. The third one is gel electrophoresis. So what is done in gel electrophoresis? So this is a method which is used to separate the mixture of DNA, RNA and protein based on their molecular size. So when it comes to gel electrophoresis, the following steps are taken. First one is pouring of the gel. That is either we use the agarose gel or various other gels are available these days. So based on that, the first step will be the pouring of the gel. The second one will be preparing our samples. The third step will be loading the gel with those samples. The fourth step is running the gel. That is these gels, uh, they are subjected to the electric field and based on that electric field and, the, and in that gel, the various mixture of ours that we have put as the template that is separated based on the molecular size. The fifth one is staining of the gel. After we stain the gel, then only we can get different bands. So generally, if this is a gel, 
This is where we will load our sample. And once this gel is subjected to the electric field, and then after staining of the gel, we can see that we will get different different bands based on the molecular size and their separation. So molecular, uh, this gel electrophoresis that is used more in molecular biology and biochemistry labs. Forensic science also uses uh, gel electrophoresis a lot. Conservational biology and medical field also uses gel electrophoresis. DNA fingerprinting is one such technique which is used to confirm the birth of uh, the child birth whether uh, this, these are the original biological parents or when it comes to the crime scene also uh, based on the DNA fingerprinting we can determine whether this is the person who could have committed this crime or not and for DNA fingerprinting the first step is gel electrophoresis. The fourth technique is blotting. So when it comes to blotting, blotting means separation or separation and then transfer of DNA, RNA and proteins. So DNA, RNA and proteins, they are first separated and then they are transformed into a bloating membrane. And then this is subjected to detection by using different kind of probes. So the first step is separation using gel electrophoresis and then transfer to a bloating membrane. And the third step will be detection with a labeled probe. Okay, so when it comes to bloating, there are four different kind of bloating. The first one is southern bloating, the second is western bloating, the third one is northern bloating and the fourth one is eastern, eastern bloating. So in uh, southern bloating, analysis is done for DNA, the western bloating, protein analysis and uh, northern bloating, analysis is done for RNA and eastern bloating, carbohydrate detection is done. So where is this bloating techniques used? Bloating techniques, they are used majorly for gene discovery, mapping, evolution, developmental studies, various diagnostics that we do and also in the forensic science. The fifth technique is chromatography technique. So uh, the principle that operates based on this chromatography is the components, they are separated when the mixture is in a mobile phase, that, it, uh, that the mixture is in the liquid phase and it is moved through a stationary phase. When this is done, the liquid phase before passing out totally, it will get stuck at the stage, it will get attached or stuck to the stationary phase. So some of the components will get attached to the stationary phase, while the rest of the liquid or the mobile phase, it washes out. So when it comes to the chromatography technique, there are various techniques for chromatography. The major ones are gas chromatography, high performance liquid chromatography or HPLC. The third one is thin layer chromatography that is TLC and paper chromatography. Apart from the important chromatography techniques, there are other chromatography techniques like ion exchange chromatography, gel permeation chromatography and affinity chromatography. So uh, chromatography is used in which places? These chromatography techniques, they are used to create vaccine. They are also useful for determining which antibodies fight against various uh, diseases and viruses. They are used in the food testing laboratories. They are used in, used in the drug testing laboratories. They are used in the beverage testing. They are also used in the forensic testing. The sixth one is NGS. NGS stands for Next Generation Sequencing. So what do we do in Next Generation Sequencing? So next generation sequencing, it is a massively parallel sequencing technique that offers us ultra high throughput scalability and also the speed. So when it comes to next generation sequencing, there are four steps. The first one is isolation of the nucleic acid. It can be DNA, RNA or any nucleic acid. The second one is library preparation. The third one is clonal amplification and sequencing and the fourth part is the da uh, data analysis so there are different types of ngs based on the machine we are using or based on the method we use so based on the method uh, these are the following types of next generation uh, next generation sequencing the first one is whole genome sequencing the second one is whole exome sequencing the third one is targeted dna sequencing the fourth one is targeted methyl sequencing the fifth one is whole transcriptome sequencing. The next one is targeted RNA sequencing and we also have SARS-CoV-2 uh, sequencing. 
So where exactly do we use this next generation sequencing? When it comes to the users, the major one is sequencing of the whole genome. Be it any organism like human or animal or any mammal, the whole genome sequencing is done through uh, NGS or next generation sequen sequencing. We, are, we also use it to investigate the genome diversity that is present. The third one is it is used in epigenetics and metagenomics. It is also used to study the gene profiling by RNA sequencing. The next one is we can also discover new organisms, microorganisms and viruses. Investigation of the microbial communities that is present in the environment and also in the human, be human body that can be done through NGS. We can also do the analysis of the viral genome that is already present within the host and also the variability that is present in the viral genome can be detected by using next generation sequencing. So detection of antiviral drug resistant mutations that is present in the patients when it comes to diseases like uh, hepatitis or HIV. Some people, they are mutated or they have mutations which will prevent them from getting those diseases. Those antiviral drug resistance um, mutations in the patients that can also be studied by using next generation sequencing. So the next technique that we will be looking at is CRISPR-Cas. So in CRISPR-Cas, there are two parts. The first one is CRISPR. The second one is CAS. So CRISPR, it stands for clustered, regularly interspaced, short, palindromic repeats. The second part is CAS. CAS, it stands for cluster as, uh, CRISPR associated sequence or CRISPR associated protein. So what we do in CRISPR-Cas? So in CRISPR-Cas, they, they act as the scissors or the molecular scissors that cut two strands of the DNA at a specific point so that one uh, a specific gene or uh, the DNA can be added or it can be removed. So the major use of CRISPR-Cas is in the field of gene editing. When it comes to the diseases like cancer, we can remove those cancerous cells from those specific location by using the CRISPR-Cas. Also to treat diseases like sickle cell anemia and HIV, CRISPR-Cas can be used. So the next use of CRISPR-Cas is it can be used to create new species or also revive the extinct species from the closely related ones. So if you take the example of mammoth, which is extinct right now. So the difference between the mammoth and elephants is 44 genes. So these 44 genes we can uh, add or delete and then create the new species or we can revive the extinct mammoth species. We can also change the mosquitoes in such a way that they don't transmit malaria anymore. In food industries also, they are used to engineer probiotic cultures. And in farming industries, CRISPR-Cas is used in the crops to enhance the yield, also to increase the tolerance for very various stresses like uh, drought or uh, you can even uh, go with the water, uh, water logging problem. For that also tolerance and resistance can be put into those crops by using the CRISPR-Cas. Also, to increase the nutritional value in crops, CRISPR-Cas is a very useful technique. The next one is DNA arrays. So, when it comes to DNA arrays, it examines the expression of thousands, thousands, tens and thousands and millions of genes at the same time. These are the following steps that are involved in the microarray. The first one is the sample collection. The second one is isolation of mRNA. The third one is creation of labeled cDNA. The fourth one is hybridization and the fifth one is collection and analysis. So when it comes to the DNA microarrays, there are two types of DNA microarrays. The first one is cDNA based microarray. The second one is oligonucleotide based microarray. So uh, where is the application for the DNA microarray techniques? So when it comes to DNA microarray techniques, it is used majorly in the drug discovery field. It is also used for the study of functional genomics, it is used in the DNA sequencing, it is used for the gene expression profiling, it is used to study the proteomics, it is used in the diagnostics and genetic engineering, it is used in the toxicological researches, it is also used in the field of pharmacogenomics. So the ninth technique that we will see today is spectroscopic techniques. So what we do in spectroscopy technique is we study the interaction at the molecular level. 
स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपिक टेक्निक्स दे आर मेजरली यूज इन द फिजिकल एंड द एनालिटिकल केमिस्ट्री सो दीज स्पेक्ट्रा इट कैन बी यूज टू डिटेक्ट आइडेंटिफाई एंड ऑल्सो क्वांटिफाई द इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट वेरियस एटम्स एंड मॉलिक्यूल्स सो वेन इट कम्स टू द यूसेज ऑफ द स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपिक टेक्निक्स इट इज यूज टू डिस्कवर लाइफ ऑन आर ओन प्लान एज वेल एज इन द अदर प्लान it is also used in our day to day activities like if we want to redo our bedroom and we want to paint that wall then we use the spectroscopic techniques and we match the paint that was previously painted in that wall um, and then we can redo with the same paint also spectroscopic techniques are also used in the development of cancer treatments there are three basic types of spectroscopy the first one is aas that is atomic absorption spectroscopy the second one is aes atomic emission spectroscopy and the third one is afs atomic fluorescence spectroscopy so when it, these are the three major types of spectroscopy there are some advanced spectroscopic technique techniques also like raman spectroscopy or nmr which stands for nuclear magnetic resonance the third one is nqr nuclear quadrupole resonance the fourth one is microwave and gamma ray spectroscopy and the fifth one is electron spin resonance these are the advanced techniques if you learn these advanced techniques it will be beneficial in whichever field you are going if you are related to molecular biology the last techniques technique that you should know is the cloning one so what is cloning cloning means replicating or the process of generating or producing a genetically identical copy of any cell or any organism so when it comes to cloning there are three different types of cloning the first one is gene cloning the second one is reproductive cloning and the third one is therapeutic cloning so when it comes to the gene cloning we create copies of genes or segments of dna while in reproductive cloning we create copies of the whole organism or the whole animal when it comes to therapeutic cloning we create embryonic stem cells so where exactly do we use this cloning techniques cloning techniques at present it is used more in agriculture field where they create various uh, pest resistant plants or they also create disease resistant plants or they also create the similar plant which will give us more yield and when it comes to other other food food technology or the food industry then uh, this technique is used majorly to produce proteins vaccines and various antibiotics so we already talked about the major techniques or the top techniques that you should learn if you want to pursue in the molecular biology line this is one such course certification course that biotechnica offers that is the molecular biology techniques in this course you can learn all these uh, the major techniques in one place itself so the link for this course is provided in the description box below go ahead and learn from this course lot of techniques thank you